In this video, we will investigate geometric Let's say we start with a number 3. A geometric sequence is one where we multiply this starting number by the same thing each time. So I'm going to I'm going to multiply everything by 2 here in this example. So my next term would be 6. And if I take 6 and times it by 2, I get 12 times it by 2 again I get 24 times it by 2 I get 48 so I can call my first term t1 so t for term and then the little one here the subscript 1 represents the first term and so this would be t2 this would be t3 t4 and finally t5 so geometric sequences have what we call a ratio, which is a number that is multiplied each time to produce the next term. And so in my case, the ratio here was 2. I was multiplying every term by 2 to generate my next term. You can, if you're given a, a bunch of terms here like these, it's very easy to find the ratio. You can just take any of the terms, say the second term, and divide it by the term previous to that. So if I take the second term which is 6 and I divide it by the first term which was 3 6 divided by 3 is 2 and that works for any of these terms if I took the fourth term here and I divided it by the third term that would be 24 divided by 12 which is also of course 2 so any term divided by the term in front of it will give us the ratio or what we need to multiply by each time in our sequence so, ratio here is 2. Let's say I wanted to find the 12th term. Say in this sequence of numbers here, I wanted to know what is the 12th term. Well, I could keep going here, times 2, get another number, times 2, get another number, and so on. But that would take, that would take a fair bit of time. So let's see if we can see a pattern here. If we look at the second term, this one here, number 6, how did we get that? I'm going to give myself a little more room here. How did we get the second term? It was really the first term, this one, times one of the ratios. So if you wanted to find t2, you'd start with the first term and multiply it by one of the r's. Let's look at the third term. How did we get the third term from the first term? Well, we started with the first term and we multiplied it by one, two r's, or r squared, r times r. And if we wanted to find the fourth term, well, we would start with the first term, and 1, 2, 3 ratios, or times r cubed, would give us the fourth term, and I think you can see the pattern here. If I wanted to find the fifth term, well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 ratios multiplied together. So notice that if you want to find a particular term, it's always just going to be the first term times one less ratio than the term that you're going to find. So we can make a general form here to say if you want to find any term, we'll say Tn, n is any term you want to find. You start with the first term, T1, and you multiply by whatever the ratio is, n minus 1 times. So for instance, if I wanted to find T12, if I wanted to find the 12th term, I would start with the first term, T1, and I'd multiply it by 12 minus 1, or 11 ratios. So let's let's look at this example here. The first term t1 was 3. The ratio we we figured out easily to be 2. And if I'm going to find the 12th term, well, that would need to be 11 of these 2s to get me to the 12th term. And so bringing up the calculator here, 3 times 2 to the power of 11 is 6144. So the 12th term in this sequence would be 6,144. Let's look at another example. So here's a geometric sequence. And let's say the question here is, what is T9? What would be the ninth term in this geometric sequence? Well, we know our formula now is if we want to find a specific term, Tn, that's equal to a times r to the power of n minus 1. 
So we simply, oh, sorry, not A, T1. We used to call that A. So T1, if I want to find a specific term that's equal to T1 times R to the power of N minus 1. So I need to know what the first term is, and I need to know what the ratio is, and I need to know how many terms it is that I'm going to find. So T1 is, is easy here. It's just the first term. The first term is 2. Next thing I need to find is my ratio in this sequence. And remember, the ratio can be found by taking the second term and dividing it by the first term. So minus 6 divided by 2, which is minus 3. And then it's just a good idea just to double check. Are we multiplying this by minus 3 to get minus 6? Yes, 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. And if I multiply negative 6 by minus 3, a negative times a negative is a positive. 6 times 3 is 18. So our ratio is minus 3. And then n is the term that we want to find. We want to find the ninth term. So t9 equals t1, 2, times r. r is negative 3 to the power of n minus 1, which is 9 minus 1, or I'm just going to write 8 there. Now, in this particular example, we need to be careful here. I see lots of students make mistakes like this. They do this 2 times, and then they go negative 3 to the power of 8. And they get an answer of negative 1,003, sorry, negative 13,122. But that's not correct. Because what we're raising to the power of 8 is not just 3, it's a minus 3 and a negative raised to an even number of times, this should have given us a positive answer. So when you're putting it in the calculator, you need, and you've got a negative raised to an even number, you must have brackets around the negative 3. Otherwise, it'll only raise the 3 to the power 8 and not the negative uh, sign. So we want to enter it like that, and this will take everything in the bracket, the negative 3, raise it to the power of 8, and then multiply by 2. And of course, we get 13,000 positive 13,122. So the ninth term in this sequence would be 13,122. Let's uh, look at this example and say we've got to find the seventh term. Well, if I'm looking at this example here and I'm going to find T7, here's my formula t of n equals t1 r to the power of n minus 1. So the first term, 45. The ratio is t2 divided by t1, which is 15 divided by 45, and this reduced to 1 third. So in this, in this case, our ratio is less than 1. It's, it's a third, and so the numbers are getting, getting smaller here. And now I can find my seventh term, T1, first term, 45, ratio, 1 third, and the power of n minus 1, so that would be a, a 6. There, 7, n here was 7, because we're asked to find the seventh term, so 7 minus 1 would give us an exponent of 6. So the seventh term, we need to work the calculator out here, 4 fifths times bracket 1 third to the power of 6 gives us a fraction of 581s. So 5 over 81 as a fraction would be the seventh term in our geometric sequence. We'll look at one more example. Well, let's say in this example here we're told that t1 is 3, so the first term is 3, and the fifth term is 243. And let's say we've got to find out what is r and then what would be t2, t3, and t4, the second, third, and fourth terms, because we're missing those ones in here. So it would look like this, 3 here, 243 here. Well, one way you could do this one is you could say, well, if if this is my first term, then I'm going to multiply that number by some ratio r. I don't know what that is. That's our problem. We don't know what the ratio is. But if I multiplied by that ratio, I would get this number, t2. 
And if I multiplied T2 by the same ratio, that would generate T3. And if I multiplied that by the ratio, I would get T4. And if I multiply that by the ratio, I would get 243, that's T5. So in other words, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4 r's, or r to the power of 4, would equal 243. Or you could put it up in the formula here too. t to the power n equals t1 r to the power of n minus 1. We know what the fifth term is, it's 243. That's the fifth term. The first term, we know that too, that's 3. r we don't know, but 5 minus 1 is 4. And so using the formula, we get the exact same equation as we have here. So whether you choose to list them up and see how many r's it's going to take to get you to the other term that you know, or you use the formula, it's really just the same thing. So here we've got 3, and we know that if we multiplied by 4 r's, that would take us to t5, which is 243. Now we just need to find r. So I'm going to divide by 3, because this is just algebra. We're just going to isolate r here. So 243 divided by uh, 3 is 81. And now I need to take the fourth root to isolate r. Well, remember, when you take an even root, we could get two answers here for r. We could get 3 or we could get negative 3 because 3 to the power of 4, of course, is 81. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or negative 3 to the power of 4 is also 81. So anytime we're taking an even root, always plus or minus. So our ratio could be 3 or minus 3. So this presents, this presents two different uh, scenarios for this geometric sequence. One could be to start at 3, and then multiply by 3, so t2 would be 9, then multiply by 3 again, 27, then multiply by 3, uh, 81, and then multiply by 3, and get our 243. So one possibility is that t2 was 9, t3 was 27, and t4 equaled 81. Or if we use the ratio of negative 3, we'd multiply by negative 3, and that would give us minus 9. We'd multiply by negative 3, negative 9 times negative 3, positive 27. And then we multiply by negative 3 again, negative 81. And then multiplying by negative 3 is back to 243. So our second scenario is that our second term could be minus 9, the third term could be positive 27, and the fourth term could be negative 81. So that's how we can work around with geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is a sequence generated by multiplying the first term and each term after that by the same number. And if you want to find the ratio, well, you can just take the second term and divide it by the first term, or you could take the seventh term and divide it by the sixth term. As long as you take any term and divide it by the term before that, that'll give you your ratio. And so if you want to find some other term, t of n, that's the nth term, any particular term you want to find, that'll always equal the first term times the ratio to the power of n minus 1. So t1 is the first term, r of course is your ratio, and n is the number of terms that, that you're interested there.